Dear students, in this video, we will talk about the quantum tunneling effect. Quantum tunneling effect is responsible for many important phenomena like alpha decay of atomic nuclei and operation of certain type of diodes. Quantum tunneling has no analogy in the classical mechanics. So, to understand the quantum tunneling effect, it is necessary to understand that particles do not have any well-defined position until it is observed. To understand the quantum tending effects, let's imagine that you are at the top of valley. And if you drop a ball down the valley, you would not expect the ball to roll up to the other sides any higher than where you drop it. That is, it will at the level of where you, from where you drop it. It's simply due to the fact that it does not have enough energy to go any higher. But at the quantum levels, things uh, work a bit differently. Particles do not have a well-defined position until they are observed. And instead, they are described by a wave function. Wave function is the probability of the particle being observed is proportional to the amplitude square of the wave function at that location. In this example, here you can see that this red sphere represents the most prob probable positions of the particles and that is the most probable location where we will observe the particle. So greater the amplitude of the wave function and greater will be the probability of finding the particle. Here in this example, you can see that here in this position, the wave function have the greater amplitude. So at the location of greater amplitude, we have the maximum probability of finding the particle. But instead, here you can see that where the amplitude is smaller, here we have the less probability of finding the particles. So the probability of finding the particle is uh, proportional to the amplitude scale of the wave function. Now look at the situation where the particle is moving toward the barrier. Suppose that particle bounces off the barrier when where the energy of the barrier is greater than the energy of the particle. And this is represented by the wave function reflecting at the boundary of the barrier. Now take a look at how the wave function behave at the boundary of the barrier and into the barrier. As the distance into the barrier increases, the amplitude of the wave function decreases exponentially. But the wave function does not reach actually at zero amplitude. Here you can see in this figure that this is the this one is the length of the barrier as the wave functions going into the barrier. Here you can see that amplitude is going to decrease but it's still it is not equal to zero. It has some amplitude when it go out of the barrier. Now look at the other condition where the length of the barrier is short. That is the amplitude of the wave function will decay inside the barrier. But since the wave function does not reach the zero wave function, so it can exit to the other side of the barrier with some amplitude. 
So once the wave function exits the barrier, it's no longer decay. That is here you can see that when it, it is going to exit the barrier again, it has some amplitude. So the portion of the particle is reflect uh, of the wave function passing through each of the boundary and the portion of the particle is reflecting from the boundary that is the particle uh, wave function that is passes through uh, uh, through this boundary and to this boundary and in the same way the wave function is reflecting from this boundary and from this boundary so if uh, now look at the other condition if we send a number of the particle toward this barrier then what will happen if we send a number of the particle towards this barrier then some of them will pass through the barrier and some of them will get reflect bad or will be bounced back so if we uh, now if we consider the length of the barrier even shorter if we decrease this length of the barrier then in this case the wave functions do not have the much distance to decay that is this distance become too short and particles do not uh, do not have the much distance to uh, to cross the barrier so when it leaves the barrier it has the greater amplitude so for this mean this means that the particles uh, which pass through the barrier and so the particles have the greater probability of tunneling through the barrier and less probability of bouncing off uh, bouncing off the barrier and this here you can see that the reflected wave function have smaller amplitude and while when the barrier uh, when the bar, uh, wave functions tunnel through this barrier have the greater amplitude so this means that there, are, there is always such a probability for the particle that the particle will pass through the barrier to the other side and there is such a probability that the particle will bounce off the barrier. Now we come to the conclusion. Here we can make some conclusion on the basis uh, of our discussion. So the first conclusion is that the greater is the length of the barrier, smaller is the probability of passing through the barrier and greater is the probability of reflecting back. It means that when the length of the barrier is greater, then the particle have to pass through a larger distance into the barrier. And when it passes through a larger distance into the barrier, then there is the greater then it decay into the barrier and there is so there is the less probability that particle will tunnel through this barrier and will go to the other side so instead there is the probability of reflecting back is greater instead of passing through the barrier now our second conclusion is that shorter the length of the barrier greater is the probability of passing through the barrier and lesser is the probability of bouncing off the barrier. This means that when the length of the barrier becomes short, then the wave functions need to pass through the less distance. See, in wave function cover the less, dist less distance inside the barrier. So, it has the greater chance to pass through the barrier with greater amplitude. So in this case, when the barrier length becomes short, so the probability of tunneling through the barrier becomes greater and probability of bouncing off the barrier become lesser. Thanks for watching my video. For more video, please subscribe my channel.